All right, so the syllabus. This is a Northeast Technical High School class, uh, room 619 in the high school. You've all found it, so you know where we are. This syllabus, as well as other information, can be found on my website, mm178.k12.sd.us. We'll be going here throughout the semester. You don't need to remember it. I will uh, get you the links as we go about it. And uh, it's also up here on the little whiteboard up high on the wall, so you don't have to remember that. Students must provide on their own a tape measure and a pencil every day. So you're going to bring a, pen, a tape measure from home. Uh, when you're done with the class, it'll be yours to take back home with you. You're not donating it or anything like that. It's just for you to use. So if you uh, misplace it or you break it, then it's, it's your own to worry about. It's not like um, it's the school property we got to worry about. Okay. And that way you can, you can bring a used one. You can bring... Um, you know, something you have laying around the house, you could get a brand new one if you want, whatever you prefer to do. We'll talk more about that in the next week or so as we start bringing them in. Topics covered uh, and core standards. These come from the South Dakota Department of Education. So we have cabinet making standard one. And we're going to observe and apply rules and regulations to comply with personal and shop safety. Then there's substandards that we have to be, we have to cover. And so substandard one is apply hand and power tool and lab safety standards. Substandard two, we're going to describe and wear appropriate personal protective equipment or PPE when needed. Substandard three, we're going to indicate a knowledge of government regulations regarding health and safety in the shop. Standard two, we're gonna explore different career opportunities in the industry, and that has some substandards. We're gonna investigate and examine career opportunities in the cabinet making industry. And substandard two, we're gonna demonstrate an understanding of necessary job skills needed in the cabinet in cabinetry careers. Standard three, we're gonna apply basic math principles used in the industry. And there's some substandards specifically what we need to do. Substandard one, we're going to demonstrate proper use of, ma of appropriate math skills. Substandard two, we're going to demonstrate an understanding of the difference between board feet and linear feet. And standard th substandard three, we're going to demonstrate proper measuring and layout skills. Standard four, we're going to identify various materials and apply project planning. Some substandards. We're going to identify wood species and en engineered materials. We're going to analyze design elements of a project plan. We're going to create and implement a bill of materials and a cut list from project drawings. And we're going to identify various types of hardware fastener adhesives used in the cabinet making industry. Standard five, we're going to recognize various cabinet joinery and assembly techniques. Substandard, we're going to demonstrate co uh, common joinery techniques and demonstrate knowledge of industry concepts to assemble projects. The last one, standard six, we're going to recognize and apply surface preparation and finishing techniques. Substandard, we're going to apply surface preparation techniques. And substandard two, we're going to apply the finishing product products. So those are the standards from the state that we need to cover for this class. Some of them will be more in depth than others, but we will cover them all. So the teacher's expectations of the students, what I expect of you, that you're gonna be responsible, you're gonna to come to class and prepared and be here on time. You're gonna be respectful of others, the property and the school. You're gonna follow rules, class and safety rules, as well as procedures. The teacher dismisses the class, not the bell. I'm sure you've heard that all day today. But keep in mind that as we're working, we're gonna have a mess that we have to clean up at the end. We can't just abandon our mess. We need to make sure we clean it up, put tools away, sweep. Okay, so we need to make sure we're getting those things done. I will watch very closely the clock as we're working. We'll have a 10 minute cleanup time at the end. So we should be plenty of time to get you all cleaned up and get you out of here. We'll talk more about the cleanup time and what I expect from you as class goes on. 
be to class on time and be honest, okay? If, if you're honest in your dealings, we should be fine. Uh, if something breaks, just let me know and we'll get that fixed. So next we have classroom rules. That's the environment we're in today. We're sitting at tables, no tools are out. Nobody's working with any machines. Um, that's our classroom environment. So when we're in a classroom environment, our rules are we need to listen to instructions the first time they're given. You're going to pick up after yourself. For example, if you don't want this syllabus when we're done, go ahead and discard it in the trash on the way out. Don't just leave it on the table. Three, uh, raise your hand to talk. You can kind of use your judgment and read the situation. Uh, if, you know, where nothing's going on, you can say, hey, Mr. Mills, but if we're in the middle of a conversation, or we're uh, having a discussion, obviously raise your hand, your typical classroom environment to get someone's attention. Be respectful. So the shop rules, it's gonna be opposite of what we're doing. We're up, moving around, we're in the shop, we're working, tools are running, people are working on projects. Uh, we're gonna follow all safety rules and procedures for working in the shop and each machine. We're gonna use common sense when working in the wood shop. Now I know some of you have more common sense than others, but try to use all the common sense that you have when working with these equipment. Okay, we wanna make sure everybody goes home with all their fingers, all their toes, that nobody loses any body parts. Okay, be respectful to others, their projects, the teacher and the facility. Okay, there's a lot of things listed there, but the teacher, the facility, now, there's about $200,000 of new equipment in here within the last 11 years or so. Some of it's newer than that, some of it's been cycled through. Um, but we have nice equipment in here for you to learn on, industrial type equipment that it should be able to last until your guys' kids come through the program. So we're gonna take care of it, we're gonna make sure that we're not you know, abusing it, doing things that we shouldn't be with it, and it should last us a, a lifetime or so. No horseplay. What does horseplay mean? Okay, messing around, doing things that you shouldn't be doing. If we're supposed to be sitting down and working on an assignment, and if you're up walking around, exploring the back room, whatever, that could be horsing around because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're off task. Be responsible for your actions. Make sure you're here on time, those kind of things. Now, how do we come up with your grade for the class? Well, we've got a grade scale on the next page. The scale on the left side is uh, actually Watertown's grading scale. It's also Northeast Technical High School's grading scale. Uh, and this is the description of work. If you want an A, you're gonna consistently demonstrate an exceptional level of quality and effort, having all work in on time and completed to exceed expectations. You're gonna show mastery in evaluating, synthesizing, and applying the knowledge. If you wanna be, you're gonna consistently demonstrate proficient knowledge with good effort and quality of work. All assignments are completed and on time. Demonstrates the ability to evaluate, anal uh, analyze, synthesize, and apply the principles. If you wanna see, you're gonna demonstrate proficient knowledge and the ability to apply what you've learned you're going to show uh, your work shows average effort and a few assignments may be missed or late. So if you have any missing work or late assignments, you really are going to should be in that C range for a grade. So for a D, you're going to your work is going to show minimal effort. Some assignments are late. You demonstrate your demonstration, uh, a basic understanding of recalling or comprehending knowledge. So you demonstrate basic understanding. In an F, your understanding is below basic. Your work is of poor quality and does not meet standards or expectations. So that's how some terminology there. Now how we come up with your grade is based on three categories. We have tests, daily points, and assignments. The assignments is on the last page. Let's talk about tests. We'll be taking many tests throughout the semester. Students must pass the safety test with 100% before you're allowed to work on the machines. Most of the tests and quizzes are given on the computer or iPad. Computers should be, uh, need to be brought to class every day. Generally, retakes are not allowed, so study and do your best work the first time. Okay, so the safety test I mentioned has to be 
So there's 16 different tests or sections broken down by machine. So when you're taking the drill press machine test, you're only working on questions on that drill press. And so uh, they're true, false, safe, unsafe questions. Should you stick your hand under a rotating bit? True or false? Should you wear safety glasses when working in the shop? Okay, a lot of common sense questions. Some of them will actually come from our demonstrations. Actually, a lot of it will come from our demonstrations. We'll talk about how to use things properly and proper orientation, things like that. So the test shouldn't be scary, even if you have to score 100%. Never usually have a problem with that. Daily points, okay? This is 45% or almost half of your grade come from your daily points. Now, daily points are made up of two different categories. And one is uh, daily participation and the other is daily assignments. And we have a rubric that we're gonna go over later, but uh, there is a link to it in the syllabus. So your daily participation has two categories. The first is contributions. The student is expected to come to class every day and ready and prepared to work. The student is expected to participate in class discussions and demonstrations and will remain seated during classroom instructions. The student will follow classroom and shop procedures. Students will bring needed materials to class and be ready to work. Uh, consistently staying focused on the work at hand. Student is self-directed and highly motivated. The next category is soft skills. Soft skills are employability skills that many business and industry require of people in their industry. The student is always respectful of his or herself, others, the teacher. The student has a positive attitude and does not criticize anyone, el anyone else's ideas or work. Other students feel safe participating in your presence. Students will treat classmates, instructors, facility, projects, and school property with respect. So we talked about the cost of machines, things like that, but also projects, you know, when you're done with your nightstand size project, you're gonna have hours of work into this project. So someone comes up and, you know, damages it, that is not good for, for either, either person, okay? We wanna make sure we're treating people's stuff with respect. They've got a lot of time invested in this. We don't wanna intentionally damage projects. So the next section would be uh, daily assignments. So there's three categories under daily assignments. Each student is expected to clean up after themselves. There'll be a cleanup period at the end of each block in which the student is expected to clean the shop and put away tools, put tools away. That uh, cleanup time is typically about 10 minutes. Safety, the student will be given weekly points for following safety rules. If a student is caught violating any safety rules or procedures while working in the shop, they will lose safety points for the day and other disciplinary steps may be taken. taken. All the owner's manuals for all the power tools and machines in the shop are on my website at mm178.k12.sd.us. So all the owner's manuals are there for you to view. So safety, we talked about that, um, owner's manuals, quality of work. Was all work completed to the best of the student's ability? Did the student fix everything that was not done properly? If you built something and it's crooked, do you just leave it and be like, ah, I'm the only one gonna look at this, it's going in my bedroom? Or are you gonna take the time to take it apart, fix the mistakes, and put it back together. That's where most of our learning is gonna happen through mistakes and things like that. I can teach and lecture to you all day long, but until you actually do it, make a mistake and learn from it, that's gonna be the, the biggest uh, learning thing that you have in here. But uh, now I, I do realize everybody's abilities are different. So when we talk about students' abilities, not everybody has the same ability. You get some students that are extremely book smart, they can't get their hands to do what they want them to do, and they, they just don't have hands-on skills. They get some kids that can't pass a regular class and they're great with their hands. They can build all kinds of things without uh, very little effort. So there's a wide variety of learning uh, levels that we have or skill levels that we'll, we'll work with. 
So daily point deductions. Here's some things that will get you a zero for all of those daily point sections. Okay? Any intentional unsafe act will result in a zero for the day. If you choose to take a nap when in the classroom, you should expect a zero for the day. Any cell phone usage will result in a zero for the day. Any foul language in class or shop will result in a zero for the day. And if you are tardy to class, two points will be deducted from the contribution, contribution section. Now, cell phone usage. We're kind of in an uh, industrial environment. If you go to a manufacturing type places, a lot of times people aren't even allowed to bring their phones out on the production floor with them. Okay, it's a safety hazard. They're worried about things vibrating in their pocket while they're running machines and so forth. So when we come in the room, our phones should be put away um, and that way they're not a distraction for us. Um, you wanna leave it on, whatever, fine, but it should not be out during class. Now I have mine on my belt on the side because what happens is we start the machines up, it's extremely loud in here, I can't hear the phone ring and someone needs to get a hold of us. That way I can feel it vibrate when the office needs to call and get a hold of me. So I do it because my boss has directed me that I need to have my phone on me, okay? For class purposes and safety purposes, you, you won't see me on it unless it's a phone call from the office or something like that. But you guys need to have yours kept away and put away. And same with the foul language. Uh, we're working on employability skills, working on uh, career readiness type stuff, and foul language isn't a place that really needs to be in, in the work environment anyways. So assignments, this is the last category, back page of the packet. The assignments make up 35% of your overall grade. So your daily points, your daily actions, things like that, way more than your actually assignments and projects. So being on task, your employability skills, those, those different categories weigh more heavily than your actual um, project would. So main project, each student will be required to make a main or final project during this class. Each student will be responsible for purchasing their own materials. Materials can be purchased through the school for your convenience. In addition, the student will need to purchase their own hardware, such as drawer slides, hinges, knobs, handles, etc. The main project must include, but not limited to the following, a box or case, face frame, legs and or trim, door and drawer, and you're gonna apply the finish. So when we talk about the final project, what we're talking about is that nightstand size project over there on the table. That's one that we build as a class. We all take turns helping, cutting, sanding, all that to get that done. It takes us about four to five class days to build that. And then what you guys will do when we're done is you're gonna sit down, you're gonna draw your own plans out. Maybe you want the drawer on top, or sorry, on bottom. Maybe you want the top to slide open and reveal a hidden compartment. Whatever it may be, you're gonna design your own. And then when you're done designing, you're actually gonna build it. So that's the project we're asking you to pay for. Now there's some other projects that we do, some smaller things like this little table here. Okay. This little folding table is one that is kind of a, what I'd call our little freaking size projects. Projects that we're, we're learning the equipment, we're learning the tools, and those projects are, they'll go home with you. There's about three or four different projects like that that you'll just take with you, they don't cost anything. The one we're looking for you to pay for the materials is the nightstand. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get to the forms. It's typically about a hundred bucks, depending on your design. Now, if you want to go bigger, wider, uh, you know, taller, it may be a little bit more, but before you start building, we'll have an idea. And if maybe you only have exactly a hundred bucks and we can re uh, evaluate your plans and make changes and make that fit within your, your budget. If you don't want to take the project with you, you don't have to. Uh, we have other options, so you don't have to pay for that if you don't want to take it with you. So within the main project grade, you'll be graded on several aspects. Included in the main project grade will be a complete set of plans, accuracy of the final project compared to the final draft of plans, craftsmanship of the project, and finishing of the project. Each student will build a secondary project in addition to their main and typically, uh, when I refer to the secondary project, uh, that's typically like your pen project. Have you guys seen the pen projects? 
students turn a piece of wood on the on the lathe. Uh, they start with square chunks, turn it down into a pen, and then assemble the pen parts. So that's an example of our second project. Now, if you get if you're an all star and you get done with that within you know two or three weeks, and we got three weeks of school left, you're going to have to have something else to stay busy, whether it's your own projects or projects that I assign you to do. So just keep that in mind. There may be other projects uh, if you if we have time. So assignments, there'll be a variety of different kinds of assignments throughout the semester. Assignments are expected to be completed on time. If an assignment is not completed on time, it will get 25% taken off. If an assignment is more than two weeks late, the assignment will not be accepted. Special circumstances must be discussed with the teacher in advance. If an assignment was due the day you were gone, then it's due your first day back. You don't get extra time if it was due the day you were gone, right? You should have had that done before the day you were gone. But you do get extra time uh, a, a day or so if it was assigned the day you were gone because you didn't, weren't here to get the material. So the next day you're here, we'll get you the material and get you working on, okay? Food or drink. There'll be no food or drink allowed in the shop or classroom. Water would be the only exception. Okay, and the reason for that is like I said, there's about $200,000 of equipment in here and you start spilling stuff, pop, soda, coffee, juice, those things when they dry, they leave a sticky residue. They're hard to clean up, hard to get out of the inside of machines. And so water is the only thing that we're gonna do to keep you hydrated. And typically if water was to spill on something, it dries and does not leave a sticky residue. Okay, so we're gonna go with just water. Now the water should only be at the tables because what I don't want to happen is have you at a table or walking around and you set your water down on a machine. One, it could spill and get inside and two, it, it most likely is cool water and it's going to sweat and have condensation which is going to leave little rings on the machines. A lot of our machines have bare steel and the, the water will almost instantly make it start rusting. Okay. So we want to make sure we're not putting our drinks on machines or people's projects. We don't want to have them in the back in the storage area. You set your wet drink down and someone's got to do a lot of extra work to get those marks out of there. Media devices, the uses of cell phones, smart watches, other wearables, iPods, PDAs, and any other audio video devices, school issued computer is the only exception, are not allowed at any time. The use of earbuds, Headphones or speakers of any kind going to the ear not allowed due to safety reasons. These items will be taken and returned at a later time. Okay, so you got earbuds in, you got strings hanging down, those are hazards, get caught in a machine. You've got earbuds in, you can't hear the machine as you're using it. If you're using a machine and something's wrong, usually it starts making a funny noise. You wanna be able to distinguish that as you're using something. If something doesn't sound right, you probably shouldn't be using it. So we don't wanna have something making a funny noise. You can't hear it because your music's blasting in your ear. Okay, when we get working on stuff, I've got a radio would turn on. Maybe it's not your favorite channel, that's fine. It's only for an hour and a half that you have to be without music for the day and whatever other classes don't allow it. But we'll have something going so it's not just uh, you and your thoughts in your head as you're listening to the loud machines, okay? Recording devices. Recording devices of any kind, audio or video, is prohibited in the wood shop. No exception to this rule unless express written permission from me. Okay, nobody should be working on a machine. Maybe someone's going up for the first time for a demonstration and have to be worried that someone's got their phone out recording them and maybe make them look goofy because they don't really understand what they're doing and they're going to try to demonstrate something back. Okay, we don't need those kind of issues in class so there should be no recording of any kind in class eye protection students are required at all times when in the shop environment to wear approved eye protection safety glasses must be worn over prescription eyeglasses lockers and padlocks each student will be assigned a locker along with the padlock these are to protect your personal items when you're not in the shop okay so safety glasses tape measure pencil should not leave the classroom. You'll put it in your assigned locker. You'll lock it up so nobody has access to it but you. And then when you come in, unlock it, get your stuff out. Your tape measure, 
okay? When you have a tape measure, it should only be in one of three spots, in your hand, on your belt or in your pocket, okay, belt slash pocket, or in your locker. Don't set it on the table because then you walk away and it gets left there. Someone else, oh, I'm just going to borrow this for a second, and they set it down somewhere else and it never comes back, okay? So make sure when you bring your tape measures in, they're yours, so take care of them. But again, be honest and respectful of other people's stuff. If someone's tape measure is laying there, don't take someone else's stuff, please. Clothing. Students who wear open-toed shoes or inappropriate footwear will not be allowed to work in the shop. The best option for footwear is steel-toed shoes. I'm not saying you have to go buy steel-toed shoes. I'm just telling you if you want your little piggies to be safe, okay, the best option is steel-toed shoes. What is not acceptable is Crocs, flip-flops, things like that. Your toes need to be covered and your heels need to be covered. Okay, if you like to wear flip-flops to school, I understand. In the summer, I hardly ever have shoes on. Okay, we have a locker here. Put your shoes in the locker, lock them up at night. When you come in the next day, put your flip-flops in there, put your shoes on, we've solved the problem. Take an old pair of shoes so you don't have to be without your good shoes, whatever it may be. This syllabus is just a guide. The teacher reserves the right to change any part at any time. Any of you guys have any questions?